Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Our podcast is about customer success and best practices around that. And with that, today we're going to focus on renewals. Many companies have already started a renewal team. They have Mark Mortimer, who is the head of the renewals team at a 30-year-old company called Highland. And he's going to share how he started the team what happened, what was the history behind that, and many of the lessons learned through that process. Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited. Thank you for having me. And you didn't start as a head of renewals, actually. I kind of want to share sort of like your career path with our audience to see how interesting it is. You actually started out, was it like a, a sales position, like a a field representative at uh, DeVry University? That was uh, high sales, classic entry-level sales for me, DeVry University. So I was a field sales rep for them, uh, dialing for dollars, and a lot of, you know, making 100 calls a week trying to set up the appointments and convince 18-year-olds on what their future should be. You joined a very established company, CA Technologies, and you started out as a customer service representative. And You worked there for 21 years? I held a number of roles with them, but I was there from uh, 1997 through to 2018. I started out as a customer service representative, which would be very equivalent today to a customer success manager, but predated that that name. And at CA, it was a combined role that you were both there for the customer from a relationship and implementation standpoint, adoption standpoint, but we did also handle the upgrades, the renewals, and so forth, and it was a combined role together. And so I've always embodied those two elements into my career. I've even said it to just today to my team. When we approach a renewal, it really starts with what is going to make this customer successful? What do we need to do here to make this customer successful? And then the renewal is part of that. And that's a financial negotiation, transactional aspect of it. But it's marrying those two pieces up together. Yeah, I love that kind of background because it's the juxtaposition between sales understanding the customer from where they come from. So having a customer service aptitude and then going up and understanding how is it working in the trenches day to day with customers versus actually managing a team and understanding what kind of strategy you need to design for that. And so after CA Technologies, you actually went to Blue Prism and worked there as a customer success director. And very quickly, you moved to your current job and employer, which is Highland. Tell me about that journey. I transferred from Canada. I'm originally from Canada, about five and a half years into my uh, CA career. I transferred to Massachusetts from outside of Toronto in Canada to work for a lady named Bernadette Nixon at that point in time to reestablish and build a team here in Framingham as part of a transformation and, and, and rebuild there. Ultimately, that led to a variety of roles within CA, but in 2019, Bernadette Nixon reached out to me. I I, I was about seven months with Blue Prism, great company, they have wonderful technology. Bernadette reached out to me and said she had this position at Alfresco. She was now the CEO of Alfresco. She'd left CA and gone to a couple of different places, but there that she knew me from before, how I built a team there and what I did and stuff like that. And she asked me to come over to be the vice president of customer success for Alfresco. And it was that combined role again of that customer centric focus, adoption, and so forth with that, with the financials, the renewals, and so forth with that. It was an opportunity too good to pass up. And so I went to work for Alfresco and I started there in August of 2019. When was the acquisition or the Highland actually happened? 13 short months later in September of 2020, it was announced and it completed very quickly in October of 2020. And so I transitioned over there. So now I've been at Highland for over two years, uh, for about two times as long as I was actually at Alfresco with it. So I'm now three, almost three and a half years total in the, on this journey on a portion of my, my career. In that time frame, after you join Alfresco, after a year and a half, Highland acquires you. And then you still serve in the role of global customer success and renewals. And then something happens around March 2022, where you become the global head of renewals. How did that happen? And what did you do as you were handed off this new role? So when we first came, the customer success team was brand new. We had the background. I came with a team of 22. 
in total. And so we focused just on growing that team, the customer success managers up, and we got to a certain a size of that. And frankly, both roles that were necessary to build for the company, more because of customer success, more renewals. So it was actually initially April 1st, 2021, we split those two. While they share a lot of DNA, renewals and customer success are not exactly the same. With it. On a spectrum of account management, you have account management sales, you have customer success, and a renewals manager kind of fits in the middle of those three. Overall, they have to understand the customer journey and so that, but they also have to have that financial and sales kind of continuity as well. So they, they run the spectrum between those two. And they're different personas. You hire specific folk for those. And again, this is part of the evolution for the company. So we split those teams and those roles apart, officially April 1st, 2021. And then we started with just seven people. When you speak about the difference between the roles, I think it's actually really interesting because there's a lot of companies that already struggle with having just an account manager and a customer success manager. You added on a renewal manager. Did you experience a little bit of a blur of the lines? Did you have to really put some effort into defining the roles and responsibilities for each and the swim lanes around cross-functional processes? We absolutely did. We actually had to create a graphic inside within Highland understood the difference between a CSM, a renewals manager, and we have a third role called the CCA, which is for escalations, but also more for our long tail customers. Digital CSM kind of role with that because it wasn't clear to people even within Highland the difference between the three. And we did create a, like a, a, an infographic around that and then taking that forward. So to explain it for some, and we had to do that as well to people on the team to say, there was 40 plus people, which one do you want to do <laughs> um, within the company? And it, it set up the establishment. We also had to create different tier levels and job descriptions as well for renewals managers and CSMs. Those didn't exist at Highland. We created those. And then we, we've also used those. We evolved those also for career pathing for people to know the difference, you know, as they move up scale and things along those lines of what, what it takes to go from being, you know, a level one through to like a level four renewals manager and the differences between those two. There's some similarities, again, between a CSM and a, and a renewals manager about how much you follow a program or how much you run a program with a customer and in the maturity between those. What kind of uh, unique skill sets are you looking for a renewal manager versus a customer success manager or an account manager? The ability to come into something quickly. Renewals managers always handle volume. CSM is, is there as a long-term relationship holder with the account. And frankly, they're there to allow sales to interact with the customer as they see appropriate. Because a salesperson could sell something last year to an account and they, they've got quota this year and it may not be at that account, but and that's where the CSM will, will go in spikes and something about how much the salesperson is involved. The renewals manager will come in at 120 days very often, begin the process, go from there. They have to obviously have the financial ac acumen, finance aspect, contract understanding, be able to link to support and understand the risk, negotiation skills, and it's very interesting when you, you interview somebody, it really does stand out whether or not they get excited about a renewal and, and how they talk about a renewal. Ed McQuiston, who is our chief commercial officer here at Highland, he's famous for a quote about, about myself. I, I've never met anybody who gets as excited about a renewal as you do, Mark, with it. I enjoy doing them and you can feel it and see it off of people. That financial piece of it, do they like doing deals? Mm -hmm. Do they like yeah. completing a renewal and something like that? And customer success managers generally focus more on that relationship and they love having that long-term relationship and driving adoption through it, which is really a different notion. There's a lot of customer success managers who don't really feel comfortable handling financial transactions. And so by splitting the role, you could really create a separate skill set. And so did you have any people that opted into one role, but should have really opted into a different one? Kind of like you had to bring them back after a trial period? <laughs> about 70% were pretty clear, but there was about 30% that were, that probably could have gone either way. And we did have a couple that moved back afterwards. Yeah. Like, this is hundred percent of this isn't exactly what I wanted to do. And then it's probably akin to people who, who have been individual contributors and managers and they've, they've gone between them. So I miss managing. So I go back and, and stuff like that. And that seemed to be the trigger for people. They, they miss doing that, that transactional interaction with customers. 
Well, we know that the renewal is something that you build up for the entire year. Your team starts their process 120 days before. So maybe we can talk about the renewal process itself. But before that, how do you know which renewal manager is better than another, given that their each account might be coming in with a completely different health situation? Here, we set up four levels of, of renewals managers on our, our career progression. And I find that very similar to the, the CSM, and I say a level one, level two. It is a little more, you follow a program. You pick it up 120 days, you look at this, you look at the details, you reach out to the sales rep, the CSM, if there is one, and so forth with that, and you follow that, create the quote, and then send it out. It's volume-oriented aspect. The complications of contracts or the complications of negotiation tend to be more limited in those customers at the dollar size. Because theoretically, if, if customers are looking for 10% off, you're not talking large dollars you know, with it. Yeah. The negotiations are different. And then when you get into the, the, the big leap is between the two and the three, where the strategic aspect of is like if you're into like, this is how I want to approach the, the renewal. This is what I think we need to do. You're generally plugged in more with the sales, but can be an add-on sale with it. That's one of the metrics ultimately that we're going to be looking at in the future here is attachment. Does that individual understand the sales cycle and how to combine those things together? Can they take the numbers and make something of them? To, can they tell a story of the renewal to a customer as they're explaining it? And that's just a higher level. In my experience, a renewals person can be functional after about a year or so. They'll be get good after about three years, and they'll begin to get into that mastery level at about five. It takes a good amount of time to, to build a person with that renewals skill set assume that they have the attitude and the desire to do that, but it's a lot about volume and doing a number of transactions and renewals over a period of time and seeing all the different bespoke flavors that you get as you move across that curve. So as an executive, what is your approach to nurturing your renewal managers to reach that level three? Because obviously we want all of our renewal managers to be at level three because we really got very high performing teams. Is it doing lunch and learns off sites? Do you provide them with training, coaching? Yes, all of that. A little less on the lunch and learn aspect, but we built here a 12 week onboarding program with it. And then we've also built a shadowing program for that to, to match up with it. We've identified experts at certain skills. We are building a skills matrix as well, where our renewals managers assess themselves and identify the areas that they feel they should be working on. But we also know within the team who are strengths in that area and they leverage each other. We do do training. We have a weekly call with the team. We bring up things. We do go through certain transactions and highlight and, and stress those aspects of it. We're a very big believer in project work with it. When we assign projects to people within the team for a variety of different things, we've leveraged most of the team at some level to do a project to build something on our behalf because we just, we can't do everything. We don't want the managers to do everything as well. There's a lot of soft skills that you build when you combine teams together and ask them to do projects. We've created a full handbook for ourselves and we're entering into uh, version three of that. It's about the procedures and documenting the procedures, but also with the graphics associated with it. You click into it, you can go and see it actually on the screens as we go. The next step for us is, is really kind of identifying that growth across the different tiers with it, what it takes to get to the next level. But we're also now going back to the renewals managers and saying, okay, well, give me two options on this and present them to me. And then it, it's not about critique. It's about how to make that better from there. It's like, okay, go change this. You know, what about this? What about that? It's putting that work onto them instead of having it sit at the managers and making the managers the super rep. Wow. And so that's how you build it over time. Again, it's not about a critique. It's, it's about them trying to get better overall with it. And when you start doing that, you can see where people need to develop individually, who's where in the process, and where then bringing those and bringing them along from there. Absolutely. So we talked about the skills that you're looking for, the fact that you define a career path and a coaching program to get to that level three. With that in mind, have you made any changes to the comp plan after you became the head of the renewals management at the Highland? We're leveraging kind of the model that we had at Alfresco because it fits. It does have a variable component associated with it. So there's a base and a variable. And we will tweak that over time. 
Today it's more MBO based because we are doing you know, some evolutionary things with regards to our sales force about reporting and the metrics we want to build out of that. An update to that is, is coming in the, in the Q1 of, of 23 for us, which will give us more access to more data and so forth. Can you give me an example of an MBO? Like what was like a target MBO, for example, like a key metric that you gave them? Four core elements are in it today. On-time renewal, retention rate, ongoing work throughout the year, and then term length would be the four core pieces that are that are in there today. We're not as much focused on the on the term length. We've kind of deprioritized that a little bit for this year. With it on the mix of the, we found the mix of business didn't necessarily call for that. But on-time renewal is an absolute essential piece. Retention overall, the retention rate associated with it, and then the ongoing work falls into that, that project category uh, work that I talked about and developmental work for people within the organization. And those have been the three core primary things that we've been focusing on this year. As we go into next year, we're going to get into a lot more metrics-based things like projected renewals, how we did against projected renewals. That will get more to a granular level on the on-time basis at a you know, on an individual renewal basis from there, but we'll also be baselining more things for term in the future and so forth with that. Attachment rate was one that I mentioned. And then just like the metrics, so a gross retention, what I refer to as like an adjusted retention. So price increases, are you getting price increases or not? And then the net a net retention, is there also upsell occurring out of the accounts? And so we'll break that down into those three categories too in the future as we evolve the program. Do you make any system changes after you started your role as the head of renewals? Indeed. We created a forecast for ourselves because there wasn't one specifically the purpose wow. building. The one we had had was, was leveraging Alfresco's implementation of, of Salesforce. And so we, that no longer exists, of course. So we're tapped into the design elements. But we've also we did use a third party to create a dashboard for ourselves. We defined the sales stages by date ranges here. We leveraged the existing stages that the, that the new sales team does. But for each one of those, we have a date range. And so it's how we track whether or not something's on time, is progressing on time. It should be at a certain stage of the renewals cycle. There's six stages that we leverage. And if it's outside of that date range, mm. there's, there's essentially a red stop sign that comes up on the opportunity. And otherwise, it's green, good to go. We know it's there. It's management by exception. But there's a dashboard that we have for that, and we can see every single one of the renewals managers fairly quickly as to whether or not they are tracking on time with that. And then we leverage also a risk factor where they can flag certain renewals at risk, and they can modify the, the forecast off of that. And that usually kicks off some sort of success plan with the, the, the CSMs and so forth associated with it. But yeah, we put those things in place, that dashboard, that tracking the on-time element, the date ranges, and defining what things should be happening by that point in time of the renewal with it. And then we're doing a very large Salesforce update for the Highland systems, which is going to bring an awful lot of effort into that over the last uh, eight to nine months as well. Yeah, because you did mention quite a bit of KPIs, then uh, I'm thinking, wow, I don't know, you know, if I were to manage a certain team, it sounds like you will have to create some changes in the system in order to be able to track them. And with that, I wanted to ask how important for you as a renewal manager or a renewals executive, I should say, to track whether renewals complete on time, earlier or late? Okay, yeah, that that aspect of it is essential because if you complete it late, it bills late, you're paid late. But we're also a subscription, but we're oriented towards subscription and SaaS, which theoretically, from a customer's perspective, they should be paid up to be continuing to use the product. Things do happen. We understand that and we handle those in a bespoke manner. But the intent is, is that it's a consistent flow associated with it. If it comes in late, then you have to start issuing temporary keys and you can only do those for a certain amount of time. There are no contractual terms, conditions in place. There's some survivability of the existing agreement, but you're out of contract and you have to keep working on it, which is overhead for the customer. It's overhead for us. There can be support implications. If not renewed on time, the support will shut off. And so you have to then over, potentially override that. So there's a lot of factors that go into why that something should be done on time for the customers. But it's, it's business. It's about completing things as well, you know, just to run your business. It's expected in a quarter. There's revenue associated with it. There's mm -hmm. cash flow associated with it. That's running a business. And we're, we are the largest piece of revenue for the company. What kind of things in the renewal process have you augmented or optimized so that the number of 
renewals that end up being late is actually being minimized. Have you taken any action since you took on the role? Where we can on the back end, we have built out processes with our deal desk. We now actually have a designated renewals deal desk team where we did not have one when we first started. And so that's improved. We've created a, something we call a card overlay. So if we do have to open up a contract request, which we, we do for a lot of different reasons, but we have the ability to manage that. My managers can go onto that card overlay, grab something and say, okay, well, this, this is in the standards. So let me move this over here to high priority. And so if legal has to look at it and so forth, they, they know to look at it quickly as opposed to prioritization aspects associated with that. The relationships we've built across the organization with our deal desk team overall, we changed our approval matrix to, to simplify that. So more businesses it can be approved by the managers on the renewals team. Again, but they didn't have a renewals matrix, approval matrix before we created that. So we have that ability to streamline things inside of the company with it. Again, the, the changes we're implementing and putting into the newer version of Salesforce are going to bring a lot of those changes as well about how we have insights and coverage. We applied and put a renewals manager on every active customer we have where that wasn't there before. And so anybody in the organization, if it's renewal related, can now come to us because there's an owner. Mm. That speeds things up immensely right there. It may not even be us necessarily, but we were become a central hub for that, whereas that could have landed in a lot of different spots in the past and created delays with the customer and so forth. And so we're a bit of a master of ceremonies about routing those things or taking ownership of it ourselves. And we have a much better process now in place with our collections team as well for the renewals that are out of it. If there's assistance needed there, they can hand it over to us because it's a billings team as opposed to, you know, billings and collections. Renewals has different relationship with accounts, like a CSM and sales have a different type of relationship with an account than a collections team do. It, mandatory, you know, you need a collections team with that, but they do tend to work more with accounts payable people. We tend to work with the end users and managers and directors at a company. So mm -hmm. you can bring those two together. And we are a hub for that as well now. So if I understand correctly, you have a renewal manager that deals with accounts that do not have a CSM, like the smaller accounts, but you also have the renewal manager that actually works with the account manager and the CSM on the larger accounts as well. Yeah. So we have both proactive motion in place today for the acquired entities of Alfresco and Nuxio. We have what we call a coverage model for the Highland renewals that are in place that if there's anything that comes up with those, requires something to do with the renewal, then that will come to our team with that. Q1 of 2023, we will be working on a much larger portfolio of Highland customers, probably upwards of about 70 to 75% in that full proactive motion where we're actually quoting directly to the customer ourselves. They will not, they, whereas historically, they've been, a lot of it's been billing on an annualized basis to customers. We will actually quote that, get it out in about 120 days. Gives us the insights that if you just auto bill to a customer, you don't know if it's going to be paid. A renewals manager brings that to the table of mm -hmm. tracking it like a traditional sales motion. With those six stages I mentioned, with the days that are supposed to be there, we know if it's on track, if it's going to be behind, and so forth with that. Rather than just having it out there, we have very good renewal rates overall for a, a lot of our product lines. So we're not necessarily going to go and propose multi-year agreements. We're still going to do one-year agreements. But that business oversight and knowledge of where it is in the process, and if there is something that's coming up related to it, we're proactive at 120 days to get ahead of that, work with a CSM or, or take the ownership of us if we have to, to be out in front of that. Can you tell me a little bit about the process itself? You say it starts at 120 days. Let's talk about accounts that do have a CSM assigned to them. Who mm -hmm. starts the process? Is it the renewal manager? And how does it start? Does the CSM kicks it off? Is it the system alert? And then who takes the first step? It, it is us. It, the renewals manager owns that and kicks it off. And then we'll reach out. We also have a, a customer management system. The notes are captured in there with it that our team can leverage and, and more so in the future. We mm -hmm. look at it. Knock on the door of both the CSM and the sales exec for the account. The sales exec or any intel on it, what's happening with the account, if they've been active in it, is there an active sales cycle? Could that be combined or may it combine with 
the renewal at the same time as an upsell or something new. And then there's the subject matter expert aspects related to the like to the master of the existing agreement and so forth and working with sales on that. So at 120 days, we do our due diligence around the financials, the contractual terms, reaching out internally to the two core stakeholders of CSMs and sales, and then begin to go from there. If it's a traditional renewal and there's no sales cycle along with that, we get a sense of where we're at with the customer. Again, our anticipation is 80% of the time, hopefully 80% of the time plus, it's streamlined. It's There, there isn't something that's going to be a speed bump or whatever the case is, and we'll go ahead and quote, get to that, reach out to the customer, notify them your renewal is coming up at, at this point in time. We don't fly a quote to the customer at that point in time. We want the feedback first from the customer to know we've got the right person, you know, they're aware of the renewal, and we'll typically begin to get the quotes out around 90 days or so before the expiration date. If at the 120th day, your team dis- discovers well before they reach out to the customer that there's potential technical issues that are not resolved or other potential issues, do they have like a playbook as to what you recommend them to do at that point before they even send the contract? We're building that with the CSM team actually today related to that. And there's there's things within the health score and risk management aspect from the CSM side. So the hope is that if there's a problem, we actually know about it before 120 days. As I mentioned, you know, the renewal hopefully is something that's a non-event, and that risk should hopefully show itself beforehand. So if it's nine months before, if a factor changes within that uh, health score, if it goes from green to yellow, yellow to red, or whatever the case may be, there's an associated playbook with that that includes the renewals manager, and we ultimately are, are we're building those to, uh, to have it. It's a little more bespoke today, but that is absolutely part of what we're building as part of the renewals process and the CSM process today. Have you seen any correlation between conducting an executive business review at the 120th day mark or a little before and your propensity and ability to actually secure the renewal regardless of technical issues? We assess it more off of internal. We get a a flavor of where we are at with the customer from the CSM, from the Mm -hmm. sales team, and so forth. There's other aspects that are not in place. We can get that that feel for where we are with the customer. There's an overall assessment of engagement, the history and looking at the customer. If they've done services, they're on a current version, if they have taken education courses, what are the support issues like? You know if the customer is engaged with you and aspect with that. So we don't tend to get into that. We do we leave that domain into the in the hands of the, the, the CSM and sales to be managing that long-term piece. But we certainly plug into it and and leverage it to be able to understand the value and talk about the customer with that. Got it. Okay. I, I just asked because we have seen a positive correlation if the CSM does or the account manager does the quarterly business review or an executive business review in the period leading to the renewals. First of all, they can plan a long-term vision with the client. So when the client comes to the renewal, the sort of like the decision to renew has already been made through mm-hmm. that discussion. And that's why I asked if part of the renewal process, even though your team doesn't own it, do you have a step requiring the other team members on that trifecta of uh, account manager, CSM, and renewal manager to ask them to actually conduct that in the weeks prior to the renewal day, prior to the 90th day, if you will? We did use and it implemented was a surveying system. So at about six months before the renewal, actually, there's a mid-cycle survey we're looking at sending to customers there. Even the non-response on that is a response in a way because yeah. they don't answer the survey back. Okay, we didn't get it back. It does make you look at it with a bit of a more focused aspect. If they do respond back, then of course we get the insights from that directly with it. So that's something that we're looking to do and we're, and we're tagging the, the CSMs as well to, to have an interaction with the customer somewhere around six months before where we actually pick it up at 120 days and start to do the renewal process. So that's even a, a little more of a proactive. That's not in place today, but that's certainly something we put on the roadmap to have as part of our process and that yeah. risk management system that we want to have in place all the way through. Got it. Okay. So your team does some due diligence at the 120th day, and then they send the contract or they send a notification to the customer at the 90th day. What happens next? Like at the 60th day, are you already expecting verbal acceptance, so to speak, like a soft acceptance from the customer? Somewhere close to that, generally probably closer to 30 days. As much as you can notify customers, if it's still 90 days out, it does not mean that they're going to 
directly, like, oh, I got to get on this immediately. It's 90. Yeah. The sense of urgency quite isn't there yet at 90 days. So, but as it gets closer to 30, we do have pre made templates that we can use on either an automated or a push basis. We can send fills in the details and so forth. They're pre written. We can send those out of Salesforce to the customer, depending on what the answers are. If the customer's engaging back, then we don't keep sending the standardized one. Know that we're into an, you know, an email and a, and a verbal conversation back and forth. And then we begin to track it from there. But we were generally seeking to get the equipment to the renewal by about 30 days before. The, most of our standard agreements have a notification period of cancellation that comes mm-hmm. 30 days. So the customer, like notice of non renewal, should be coming from the customer 30 days before, not after that. So that's why we target around that range. Per your experience, if the customer does not renew in time, do you have any covenants or things that you you coach your team to do or the system is doing to encourage the customer to renew? There are a number of tactics, things of that. They range from obviously being a stick to a carrot. When you're doing renewal, there's a classic aspect of trading things with regards to that. And and if somebody asks for a concession, just say, okay, well, can you give me like a couple more thousand dollars off? I want to get it under a hundred thousand dollars or something. It's like, Mm. okay, we're two thousand dollars away. I can go ask for that with regards to that, but can you complete it by Friday? Just simple little things like that that you can do. We know people need and want to negotiate at the same time with regards to that. And we don't want to give just straight concessions, but so we that time element. But it's a lot about starting with the endpoint and working backwards. So to, in setting that expectation with the customer, your expiration date is this, we need to complete it by, we want to allow for some period of time before that. So, that, so even if that's two weeks before, with it, again, we try to that, that 30 days as much as possible to say, but if we're targeting a completion date by this, what needs to happen at your end between now and then? Trying to establish that up front with the customer about what that process is and, and the timelines necessary from it. And then holding ourselves accountable to it. Because obviously if we get things back, legal changes, like, look, I've got a deadline I put with the customer. I need this back from us as well. So it's that two-way holding accountability, you know, holding the customer accountable and holding ourselves accountable. Well, if someone is um, becoming ahead of the renewals, what were like a few tips that you can give them in order to increase performance in the renewal process and also, of course, in the renewal KPIs and performance overall? Know their territory. Know what's coming because you're going to have up and down throughout the year. Get to know your sales reps and so that. But that territory knowledge, and if you stick with the territory, we've tried to create territories that will be consistent over time. Because if it's an annual renewal and you do, oh yeah, I renewed that last year, you will remember that. We're going to try and keep that consistency with the team as well. But when you know your territory, it's like, this is 120 days out. I have, pick a number, 100 renewals this year that I need to work on. Oh, look, 40 of them are in, the, are in December. I better get my quotes pre-done you know, now and something like that. So, and I can try and follow the process still with regard to that, but do that behind the scenes work of creating the quotes, the, the, the agreements, understanding what's happening and something like that. So you, you can do that administration portion as much as you possible in your non-working or your non-closing, your non-completion times to set that sort of up. And so it's having that discipline and cadence about your business. But when you do that review and research the first time, make your notes so you don't have to do it every year. And that consistency of territory, you, you will know the customers over time and just, you don't have to go back and do all that work each time. So you're not a big fan of shuffling accounts, um, oh. actually. <laughs> no, no. What we want to try and do is create set territories overall. And if for some reason somebody did leave or you go to a different position, that Highland is a company that really, really believes and giving people opportunities within the company. I've had it within my own team. Like there's people who've come over to my team from other places. That I've had people come over to my team and then go to another position later on because they're like, oh, I can do. There's one individual, they, they, they were on the collections team. They came over to our team, loved it, but found that they loved training people and building the knowledge pieces and so forth like that. And they've actually now gone over to a team that works on things that builds that those materials for our renewals team. An enablement team. Yeah. So if we have somebody that does that and like, they come out of that territory, we don't shuffle the accounts. The intent would then be to hire somebody for that territory. Specifically. Interesting. 
to plug to plug them into that as opposed to impacting anybody else's territory. It, it would only compound the problem. It may take you three months to, to find the right individual, and we'll have, we'll have coverage. Okay, it's you know, you'll spread it out for coverage because the rules don't stop. They're like the post office, right? But but we will hire specifically for, for that territory. Any advice looking back? What would you recommend a renewal director? Somebody that says they're giving him is like, all right, you're now responsible only for the renewals. Here's your team. Go. Is this for somebody who's managing renewals managers? Yeah, kind of like you, head of renewals. I think they already exist. I know in Adobe, Highland, some of the bigger companies, obviously. But we mm -hmm. also see it happening in smaller companies where there's a lot of renewals. And so if somebody gets this role, what would be like some things that you would recommend them to do maybe in the first 90 days or just in general things to not do in terms of comp plans, KPIs, systems? Understand what's already in place. If somebody is coming in to be a manager of a renewals team, I would not hire somebody for that position who has not done renewals previously. It won't work. There is an aptitude towards it. There's a history. You have to be able to teach it. You have to be able to coach people on it. Sales managers are coming over from that to, there's an aspect of it, yes. You have to have that knowledge of how to do an agreement with a customer. It's essential. If somebody's going to be a manager in the real space, it is most likely 99% that they're coming from an individual contributor role in the renewals management space. But yeah, understand what's in place and then begin to work on it. Leverage your people. Yeah. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Have them come back to you. It's the way you make people better. It's how they learn. How did you learn it? Is, you know, I say it's like, how did you learn to do this? It's because you did it. Have people do that. Rely on your people and delegate. You're only going to be successful through your people. Well, Mark, thank you so much. So much knowledge around renewals. And one of the things that stood out for me is that you lead by people and numbers. And the fact that you have such a great plethora of experience, not just in sales, but in customer success and in services, really serves you well in this role. So I'd like to really appreciate you for bringing in these experiences and your approach to renewal management. Thank you. I did, this was fun. I appreciated this. I know a follow on from a presentation that I had done at the corporate level with the guys of that, which I enjoyed uh, doing as well. Totally that. But as you can tell, I love renewals. I love doing renewals. Yes. And I love customer success and that element of blending the two together overall. I enjoy what I do. Thank you so much. Absolutely delighted to have you on, on the podcast today. It was really Thank wonderful. You. Everyone, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and push the notification button on so that you get to speak to people like Mark and hear how they're doing their thing. And in this case, it was how do you manage a renewal team? How do you approach the renewal process? How do you cultivate higher skill level for the renewal managers? And how do you staff for it? Like, how do you leverage systems? All of the above. So if you have any questions about that, all of that is in today's video and feel free to forward it to all of your friends. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you at the next video.